Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on power system testing topics. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. In this episode, we will be talking about how to best manage cybersecurity risks to power utility systems. With increased digitalization, the vulnerability of these systems to cyber attacks, blackmail, and blackouts is on the rise. It is therefore essential that power utilities take proactive steps to ensure the security of their systems, such as implementing vulnerability management processes in substations and power plants to effectively identify, prioritize, and handle risks. My guest in this episode is Omicron Power Grid's cybersecurity expert, Andreas Klien. He will explain how vulnerability management works, including the importance of system visibility, a comprehensive asset inventory, intrusion detection, and proper risk prioritization. Andreas will also highlight important loopholes and challenges of vulnerability management and talks about how Omicron's solution called Station Guard overcomes these challenges and effectively secures the power system networks it is implemented in. Andreas has over 17 years of experience in this field, and he currently manages Omicron's Power Grid Security and Communication Testing Tools business area called Power Utility Communication. He bears global responsibility for the division, including R&D, marketing, sales, and business development. Hello, Andreas. Welcome to Energy Talks. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you again for being here with us for this discussion. Andreas, can you tell us about your personal involvement in the protection of substations and power plants? I have been working with substation automation protocols since actually 2005. So I have been working as a software developer for embedded systems. And so I was also involved in implementing these protocol stacks. And so I was deeply dealing with these communication protocols there, Mm -hmm. and especially with IC61850 in the beginning, but then later on also with other protocols. And then in 2010, there was a big event, a big cyber attack called Stuxnet, and it was the first ever cyber attack to have an effect on a physical system. And this triggered a big discussion, a lot of media coverage, and it also went into the utility world. And back then, all the conferences around power grid energy topics did cover cybersecurity as well because of that big event. So this was also the event where also Omicron was triggered to start researching in this field of power grid cybersecurity. So the security of substations and power plants and power grid SCADA systems. Mm -hmm. And that was in 2010. And the years following after that, but the hype cycle went down a little bit in the utility world. So other topics were more interesting until it picked up again around the year 2015, because this was the year of the first blackout, which was caused by hackers. Interesting. It was a cyber attack on the power grid in the Ukraine. 2015, it was followed by a lot of other cyber attacks in Ukraine and another one causing blackout in 2016. And this caused the topic to stay relevant and the hype to increase more and more over years. Okay. So Andreas, what makes you an expert in this field? I have been conducting security assessments in substations and power plants all over the world for many years now. So I have done these security assessments in super modern process bus substations where everything runs over Ethernet networks, even the measurement signals run over Ethernet there. But Mm -hmm. I've also done it in legacy substations and power plants where these Ethernet networks have been in operation actually for decades. So I have seen a lot of different system designs and I have also seen what can go wrong. And there are several very common attack vectors, which we see in almost all power plants and substations every time. So there's this top five. We also published an article on the top three or top five typical vulnerabilities that these networks have. And you might think that after so many years with always the same kind of networks, you think you've seen it all. Mm -hmm. 
it is actually the opposite. Every time we think we saw it all in terms of how these networks are implemented, suddenly we see a new architecture or a new thing that can go wrong. So we keep learning, even in the year 2022, we keep learning about how utilities structure these networks and what are common weaknesses there. Network architecture in power plants can be different in different countries, and each of them have their own cybersecurity implications. Okay, so this is certainly an evolving topic here. There is one aspect called vulnerability management, and it is a big buzzword. Can you explain to us what this means exactly? What aspects of a system's cybersecurity are covered by it? The term vulnerability management has been in use in the IT domain for many years now. It is a state-of-the-art process and established there. Vulnerability management is the continuous process of dealing with security vulnerabilities in the software you use. And thus, it covers finding vulnerabilities and then evaluate their impact on your business and treating these vulnerabilities. One option for treatment of a vulnerability is obviously patching the software, installing the update. The other mm -hmm. option would be to just accept the risk and to not patch it. There is obviously also a lot of software running in the devices that control and protect our power grid infrastructure. These devices also have security vulnerabilities because there is no software without bugs. Any reasonable piece of software will have bugs and you will keep finding bugs there. And if you can use the bugs to a hacker's advantage, they are, they are a vulnerability, they are a weakness in mm -hmm. terms of cybersecurity. So when you want to assess the cyber risks of your power grid network, then the security vulnerabilities of your devices are one aspect of that. It's not everything. Not all the risks are vulnerabilities in your devices. You also have other risks in terms of the architecture and also in terms of the physical protection of these buildings, for example. But it is one aspect of your cybersecurity risk landscape. When you do vulnerability management in the power grid domain, there are many things different than for classical IT systems, though. Okay. Why is an effective vulnerability management so important for utilities worldwide? It already works well in the IT domain. Why should it be different in the power grid? There is generally the problem that IT people and protection and control engineers, the so-called operational technology people, OT people, they don't understand each other. IT <laughs> people tend to think it's the same as our stuff anyway, so what's the big deal? Whereas OT people think that is so completely different, it makes no sense to treat it the same at all. In reality, there are some things which can be taken over from IT, but there are also some things which have to be thought of in a completely new way because the IT way simply doesn't work there. And to the beginning of your question, vulnerability management is important because you cannot protect yourself against cyber risks, which you don't even know. Mm -hmm. You need to know about your assets that you want to protect and what their weaknesses are, the vulnerabilities, how these vulnerabilities would be exploited. And only on that basis, you can thoroughly protect them. Otherwise, you would only assume what would be needed to protect them. Mm -hmm. The other reason for implementing vulnerability management processes, because asset inventory and vulnerability management is required by several standards and regulations. So if your utility or organization is certified by ISO 20,000 standard series, which is the case for the utilities in Germany, for example, and also in other EU countries, then you must implement such a process. You need to consider these risks as well in your risk landscape. Mm -hmm. The fundamental difference between IT and in the power grid operational technology networks is that you cannot patch the devices in the latter. It's a bit of an exaggeration. So in some cases you can install updates, but in most cases, it's really difficult to install updates on these devices. Mm -hmm. And this is why you cannot shut down a device which is protecting a power line or which is protecting a generator while the system is energized. So you must turn the power off. 
And if you think about that, how do you de-energize power lines or generators when the power grid is overloaded anyway? Mm -hmm. So when the load situation also changes rapidly over the day, as it is now with renewable energy, where the load situation and even the power flow direction can change throughout the day. So if you want to install an update, then you must de-energize. So you must get approval for de-energizing that equipment. And that approval takes weeks or months to get it. And once you're done, already the next vulnerabilities will be published for these devices in the meantime, and you can just start over again. Mm -hmm. And I have also heard about whole teams which have been assigned for patching power grid OT devices. And it was not possible to patch the whole fleet with one cycle until already the next vulnerabilities came out. So it was an endless cycle and they were always behind. Then the second problem is, how do you know that everything still works in the same way as before the update? You can test some functions like the protection functions. They can be tested easily in an automated way. But what about your custom programmed logic, all the configuration that you made in this area, how do you test that again? The only way to test that is to operate breakers and to move the equipment. And that's something you simply cannot do in a live substation, for example. Mm -hmm. And if you can't really patch everything, if you can't really patch all functions properly, then the risk of applying a patch can sometimes be higher than not to apply that patch. And therefore, you cannot just apply every software update to protection relays and to SCADA equipment. You need to manage your risks and you need to only apply those patches where the risk is very high without applying it and where the effort makes sense. And for this purpose, to do this risk management, to make this decision, should I patch or should I not patch, you need an effective vulnerability management as a basis. Where do you see the biggest obstacles for substation and power plant owners who wish to implement a proper vulnerability management in their systems? The challenge is that you need to know a lot about your devices to be able to assess if a certain vulnerability really affects you or not, if it's really a risk for you. For example, one vendor issues vulnerabilities for a certain communication module, which is used in several different protection relays. And now the question is, the person who is doing the vulnerability management, that person needs to know that this module is used in many of their different relays, although the relays have a different type and model description, but still that communication module is assembled in these relays, and they even need to know the firmware version of that communication module. Mm -hmm. So therefore, to do this vulnerability management process, you always need protection and control engineers. So the operational technology experts, they're always needed in this process. And so the IT and OT experts need to work together a lot to accomplish this task. Okay. What challenges do you think need to be overcome for a risk management to be successful? Are there checkboxes on the to-do list that need to be checked off? Are some of them more important than others? At first, you need to establish this very precise asset inventory so that you have that knowledge about the devices and their firmware versions. As I mentioned before, with the communication card and the firmware version used on the communication card in specific types of protection relays, you need a database with all of this information included so that you can comfortably search through that database to find out if you are affected by a certain vulnerability mm -hmm. of that manufacturer. So some utilities already maintain such an asset inventory, which includes that information. And there are multiple options to get such an asset inventory and to keep it up to date. Mm -hmm. And these options all pose challenges. So one option is to manually do that. Some utilities do this in their ERP system, like SAP, for example, or they have other databases for managing the devices and their configuration. Omicron also provides such a configuration management database called Admo. Some of them manage spreadsheets for each site, or even they have one big spreadsheet containing all the assets of the organization. The problem with all of these approaches is that it's a lot of work and error prone to keep them up to date. Mm -hmm. 
And therefore, the other option is to do that in some way automatically using systems which scan the network either just once when you visit them or they can even periodically scan the network to detect new assets in the network and to detect all the changed properties of the assets in the network. Okay, do you have an example of such a tool? Omicron provides such a system. The solution is called Station Guard. You can run Station Guard once to scan the network with a mobile version, but the main way how our customers are using it is that you can install Station Guard permanently to scan for such assets and also to scan the properties. And this can be put automatically into such an asset inventory database. And with Station Guard, this can be done together and it is combined with a so-called intrusion detection system. This will also provide a lot of other detection measures to find out if there is any activity in the network which should not be there. Okay. Why is a comprehensive asset inventory so uncommon? Shouldn't it be common sense for engineers and IT specialists to know what assets are in their systems and which firmware is installed on them? You would be surprised that a comprehensive, up-to-date asset inventory is also not always common in classical IT, especially if you look at the server networks of classical IT. In the normal IT administration, they have a configuration management database covering all the laptops and all the IT equipment, which is handed out to employees. But in many cases, the whole server architecture and what is going on in these networks is sometimes not so well inventorized, so to say. In the power grid, there are more challenges to this. Compared to server rooms in the IT, the challenge in the power grid is that all the involved people need to correctly document the changes they made to the configuration and to the firmware installed. And there are a lot of different teams involved there. So there are not just protection relays and protection engineers, but there are also other devices like SCADA equipment, but also network switches, IP cameras, printers, and all of these different devices. And there are always different people interacting with them or installing them. And all of this equipment from different teams needs to be listed in one common searchable database. Okay, so how does a perfect vulnerability management look like? I would recommend a system which continuously scans the assets in the networks because then it can also alarm you if there is a new asset communicating. Mm -hmm. Systems should also use automatic methods to read out the device type and firmware version. And there is the 6150 MMS protocol, which is quite reliable for doing that. And the additional advantage of that is with this, you can also detect configuration changes and changes in the firmware version also 24 seven. So if somebody intentionally or maybe even maliciously changes the firmware version, that would also be detected. The perfect vulnerability management solution also needs knowledge about the specific devices and their components. Just uh, remember that communication card component used in several different protection relays. So these card and modules and the firmware versions on the cards are relevant and the vulnerability management system needs to know about that. So the vulnerability management tool needs to understand this to correctly match vulnerabilities to the devices. If it doesn't do that correctly, you will either miss vulnerabilities that you won't see because the system doesn't know that this card is used to this device, or you would even have too many vulnerabilities that you need to take care of because it just lists you anything of that manufacturer, for example. And I once calculated the effort that asset inventory and vulnerability management creates for a utility. And even if we assume that all of these databases have been established already for a small utility, even my estimation is that it would still take more than 1000 hours to just go through all the security advisories that come in every month and to keep the asset inventory up to date with all the changes that are done in engineering. And it is our goal of Omicron to save this time. For over 10 years now, Omicron Energy has been researching and developing solutions in the area of power grid cybersecurity. 
Andreas, what help can Omicron offer to utilities? Omicron provides solutions which have this power grid knowledge built in. So we provide a solution that knows how these devices are built up, which firmware versions are used, which types and models of protection relays, for example, exist. And this system also knows which vulnerabilities affect such devices. And this built-in knowledge ensures that the IT security officers, who typically don't know so much about these devices, are also equipped with that OT knowledge that they need to do the vulnerability management process. Mm -hmm. And this would eventually save time of the OT experts. On the other hand, our solutions are for IT security, but they still speak the language of protection and control engineers, and this improves the collaboration between IT officers and OT engineers. We do also provide cybersecurity consulting specifically for these OT networks in control centers and power plants and substations. And so just as an example, we are also conducting security assessments of such networks to quickly see what are the risk factors in my substation network, for example. Interesting. So what distinguishes Omicron's solution for vulnerability management from other solutions on the market? Over the last years, we created a curated database of security vulnerabilities in power utility automation products. So this includes protective relays, SCADA devices, and network equipment, for example. We work together with vendors to add all the most recent vulnerabilities to this database and our experts who know these devices, and we have the devices also here in our lab, they add metadata written into this database so that our system can automatically match the vulnerabilities. Okay. So we also have a purpose-built type database of these devices, and this database knows how which components and which firmware versions are used. Then our station guard sensors, which are installed on site, they scan for any new assets in the network, and they're even able to actively read out this nameplate information about the 6150 MMS protocol. And with all of this information, we can precisely match vulnerabilities so that you only see the vulnerabilities which are really a risk for you and your devices. Where do you think vulnerability management will have to evolve to remain secure? What steps can already be taken in this direction? There are certainly many improvements necessary, especially by the vendors of these devices to improve their security advisories. Many of the security advisories, which are published by the vendors on their websites and via email, they are ambiguous in which devices are affected, and they are also not clear enough on what is the effect on the business process, basically. So it should be easier for security practitioners to assess if an advisory actually matches the devices and what is the outcome, what can happen if this vulnerability is exploited. Over the last two years, we found many examples what to improve and we are also working together with some of the vendors and give them feedback and they already improved security advisories for their power grid automation devices. So we are trying to help there a bit by giving feedback. There was one big step, and that is that several vendors are now publishing their security advisories in a machine-readable format, the so-called CSAF, the Common Security Advisory Framework format. Mm -hmm. And this format can be read by a machine, and this helps in automating parts of the vulnerability management process. We are already using this format, and we are automatically scanning all vendor websites for changes in the security advisories they publish and we are also automatically verifying them and we also give the manufacturers feedback if there's something wrong with a new advisory or so and on that basis and with the current demand for using vulnerability management in the power grid i am sure that many interesting things will come in the near future already Definitely. Andreas, I have uh, one question. Where can our listeners get more information about Omicron solutions for vulnerability management, for example, Station Guard? 
There is a website you can visit. It's called stationguard.com. You can also go to omicronenergy.com and then navigate to the solutions for power grid cybersecurity. But in short, the short form is stationguard.com. And Very there good. are separate solution pages for asset inventory management and also for vulnerability management. Very good. And if listeners have any particular questions about these solutions, where can they turn to? Please contact our technical support, for example, if you have questions or our local sales representative or reach out to me, for example, over LinkedIn. Very good. And one last question. With Omicron Academy training courses, are there any available for cybersecurity topics? Yes, they are. So we are providing a security course specially tailor-made for the power grid that is available in the Omicron Academy. It's a brand new course. And we are also working together with partners to also deliver tailored trainings if you're more interested in topics like how to integrate that into your organizational structure. We can also give you some help there. Very good. And do you need to be an Omicron customer to participate in these trainings? No, you don't need to be a customer. So you can just visit the Omicron Academy website and there you will find also some more information to how to contact us. And of course, you don't need to be an Omicron customer for that. Okay, very good. And that Omicron Academy website can be found on the Omicron Energy website, www.omicronenergy.com. And you look under training to find that information. Andreas, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and experiences with Power Grid Cybersecurity in this episode of Energy Talks. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you again. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We always welcome your questions and feedback. Simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing and offers you the matching solution for your application. This includes reliable solutions for cybersecurity, which was the topic of this episode. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone.